Thank you, Lord, for the givers. Blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, we might go now to, as you're giving, it's just if Shelley and Emmanuel can prepare themselves to come up here. And Shelley and Emmanuel want to invite your team to come, those that serve with you over the couple of days, everybody who was there present, whether a short time or a long time, okay? Everybody was at the show and just help spend a bit of time with Shelley and Emmanuel. I want you all to come up the front, everybody come up here and stand alongside them this morning. Now, we just want to hear what the good things God's doing because I believe there's a victory shout in the house today. When you hear what God has done. I purposely haven't said anything because... Um, what do you want them all to come over? Joe would like you all to move over in the middle. Come over in the middle, Shelley. Wiggle over here. That'd be great. Greg's going to stand up. Up your hop, Greggy. Come over here, team. I'll hop out of the road. Come in the middle. That's great. Is everybody who came to the show and helped and spent some time there, are you up the front? If you're not, maybe you're not here today, but please come up if you are spent any time there just popping in. Andrea, you popped in there. Come on. Everyone say, come on, Andrea. Come on, Mum. Yeah, you were there. Shared and fellowshiped around. Come on, Craigie. Anybody else you want to call up? There's a few away. Please, guys, testify. Tell us what's been happening. Um, first of all, glory, glory to our Lord God for the show. We had favour. We had positioning. We had everything that was just right. And to the glory of God, we had 37 salvations in two days. Get those boots tucking. So we had 27 salvations on Friday. And 10 on Saturday. Amen. Um, we had everything from a six-year-old foster girl that gave her heart to the Lord. We gave her a Bible. You would have thought it was Christmas. We had teens, a group, whole group of teens give their heart. We had um, single mums with kids change their heart, give their heart to the Lord. We had a man in a wheelchair give their heart. Like the extensive reach that God uh, touched people was just phenomenal. We had one lady who was a Buddhist, had no, no idea about Christ, and she changed her heart to a million. Amen. For me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Apart from that, there were people who were really healed. They came in with troubles of lies that were bound on their lives for many years and they chains were broken and they were set free. Yes. Manuel and I cannot thank our team enough. Really, I am in we are in honor of all of you. Everybody stepped up to the plate. Everybody was 120% the whole time and just gave everything that they had. Young David is not here, but he, yes. he needs a cape because <laughs> he is just a little superhero. I know he's not here today. We had also had some people from Boona, which was Wesley, Warren, James and Ron. Um, and they were a great help as well also. Um, the boots as well. Oh, I really want to thank you to Food Bank, you have to apologise my voice, Food Bank gave us over $9,000 worth of boots yeah. and we gave them all away on Friday. <laughs> because of those boots, people got saved. Yep. We had a family saved from the boots. We had two bus drivers from Coralbin who received boot, a pair of boots. Not only did she have boots, she saved she received Jesus. Yep. Her friend was so excited she received Jesus. So they went home set free yep. and boots for walking. Yep. 
but um, it was a real honour for us to have that and to be able to give that. Our, our blessing was the joy because as the night proceeded, all these parents were walking around their little kids with boots on. Yeah. And it just, it gave us such joy. Um, yeah, there was just, there, like, if you have time today, please, please come and see somebody and ask them about what happened mm -hmm. because we could do the whole service just on the show. Yeah. The stories were just endless of kids that we spoke to, families we spoke to. Um, and we've invited so many into youth. So many youth were really excited about this coming Friday. Yeah, um, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd just like to honour Lord Jesus Christ for all those yeah. salvations, Father. And we pray, Lord, that the, the devil and the dark side cannot yeah. take them away, Lord. They're anchored in you, Lord. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you speak to them right now, wherever they are, and bring them closer to you, Father. In the name of Jesus. And we thank the team here and our church. Amen. Yeah, we, we also, the church paid for our store and we really give honour and thanks for that because they put us in a position that just worked. It worked so awesome. Um, Manuel and I also agreed that the prayer that was prior to this was the vitality of us being there. We can't be out there without all you guys backing us in the glory of God. And your faith and your stance in that enables us because we did come across, the, let's say, the enemy coming into our tent, which came in in real force, but not for long. <laughs> but it did. It did, and it really, it you know, it tried to it sneak itself in, but it, it didn't matter because we were a lighthouse. Those rocks were around, but it didn't matter any difference because there wasn't a boat that was crashed. So many people's hearts were receiving. There wasn't, wasn't it? It, it and when people gave their heart to the Lord, I kept saying it was like buttering bread. That's how easy it was. You just yeah. said, like, I had three teens, two 13s and a 12-year-old, and I talked to them about the Lord. I said, would you like to... And they're like, yes. I said, would you like to pray now? Yes. Do you want to, and do you want to read with me? Yes. Do you guys want Bibles? Yes. And they couldn't wait. And they came back to our stall about four or five times yeah. through that time. So the eagerness for people that are out there is so rich. So we want to... What we've planted... You guys need to be out there encouraging on talking to people. I really want to encourage everybody with that. Yep. Did you want to? Yeah. Yep. Let's, um, let me just turn this on here. Let's, let's do this today. I want at least four or five of these people to share one encounter, one brief encounter that they've encouraged some of the team. Okay? So you work on five people, four or five people. Um, so you want and while they're doing that, I'm just thinking today, Church, can I just talk to you a moment? This is very important today. Who knows coming to church on Sunday is important? Who knows it's only part of the whole thing? Who knows what happened on the weekend along with the other attributes? Let's call Harvest Care. They meet Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're loving on the community. Dylan's been away in Canberra. People, you out on the bout, on the beat, amen? Other ministries here, the youth and young adults and kids' church, every arm that reaches out here. This is important. Mm. So whilst it's vitally important that we celebrate Sunday, who knows that this is yeah. equally and more so important. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Come on, it really is. That's what it's all about. Otherwise, we become a club that just stroke each other's back and go, good job, good job, naughty on you. You should be better than that. You should smart yourself up a bit. You should be a bit better. And it ends up, and people get looking at each other saying, you're okay, you're not okay, in amongst the house and the family of God. I'm going, get your vision outside and see what God wants to do out there. Get your eyes off there. Come on, some of you, all of us are called to out there, amen? Amen. I know you know that. I'm talking to the converted, but thank God for every one of you today in the seats here. And you know, we are all in, of the same partnering as them, as they have gone, you went with them. 
So let's hear what they did. Let's hear the stories and let's joy and celebrate. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, or then maybe chapter 6, it talks about how we, we're shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. They've been bringing peace to the community. Hallelujah. They've been bringing peace to the community. This is how Bo Desert and the City Room has changed one life at a time as people offer you. So, well, where are they today? You know what? The seed and the fruit of the ministry is God's business. I've got great revelation on this. You see, we do what we can. We draw those that we can. We invite those that we can. But the main thing is, will people's hearts be responsive and open up as they do here at church on some Sundays, amen? But how much more out there as you go, amen, that hearts open up and what God happens with those people is God's business. He said in His Word that He would not let any one of them slip. Amen. Is that true? I'm probably not quoting it properly. It, it's, he said he would never leave any of them. One that him out of his hands. So these ones, 37 plus people from this small group of people, God says, I won't let them out of my hands. I'll watch over that seed of God's word, the incorruptible seed of God's word. I want you to get excited, church, because otherwise we become a church that just has a happy time on Sunday. And we love that. Amen. And any other time we gather together, we get nourished, we come and get fed the Word midweek, we hear the Word, we get nourished, we get fatter and fatter and fatter, we're getting built up and built up and built up to go out, yeah. hallelujah, to have confidence to see God move powerfully. This is what, this is revival. Yeah. Is that okay, though? Can I just help you switch? Otherwise, it's become about, well, I don't like that. They do a church. I wish they wouldn't make it so long. And I wish they would sing only that song. And I wish that bloke would preach all the time and not that fella. And I wish this had happened. You know, we, and it comes like that if we let it get into our head. But this is what it's about. The kingdom of God expanding and exploding. Amen. I can't wait till 3,000 come to the Lord on one day. That's how it was in the book of Acts. I was telling a good friend of ours, I think he's here today. Sir, up the back there, where someone, there was someone here. Are we up there, up the back on the weekend. Let me just talk. Can I talk for a minute? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a family to come to church this weekend from the outreach. Is that right? God bless you. Welcome today. Come, let's give them a round of applause this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was telling a friend on the weekend, I grew up in revival. I've said this before, Pastor Grace and I, we lived in a revival. Our parents took, to a, took us to a church in Nambour that was, in, it was birthed in revival. And I said, what happened is that there was new families, new people every week in church as I was growing up. It's like, who's here today? And you know what? It's no joke of a lie that as the worship started and people were in the car park, they would run. Wendy was there. Is that right? You were that same era. Pastor Wendy, you would run into the house of God and say, man, I'm, the seats are running out. I've got to get myself a spot in the house of God. Can I encourage you and enthusiasm? This is what you get excited about. This is what we're encouraged about today. It's not about what preaching word I've got. Someone says, I didn't hear the word today. You've already heard the word this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you were listening. It's about a revival and a move of God. Come Wednesday morning, get some teaching. Come Wednesday night. Come Friday morning and hear the Word of God with the seniors. Come some other time. Come to the prayer meeting and get yourself built up. But come to church on Sunday morning and let's celebrate the move of God and celebrate the working of the Holy Spirit and celebrate God touching your life, not giving you three poems and a friendly word, but God would touch your life powerfully and you go out on for the rest of the week, God fire, amen. Touched by with the glory of God. Someone say, I'm touched by the glory. I am touched by the glory. So people, I said with my friend on the weekend, that people would run to church. I'm believing God for people to run to Harvest Point Church. Come on, there's a traffic jam. Some of you have seen visions of it. Traffic jams in the car park. We probably need traffic lights at the intersection to slow the cars down because so many cars coming and so many cars coming. Who can see that today? I can see it. Yeah. Traffic lights will go, not another set. Well, you try and get out of here on a busy day and see how you go. Is that right? Who knows it's hard? Yeah. Someone say traffic lights will be okay because it means revival's happening in the church. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Because there's so many people coming up this road. Come on, we give God the glory day. We give God the praise. It's because of these. It's not because of the past or any person. It's because of these people have been out on the bead and they've won 37 souls to Jesus Christ. That's what we celebrate today. And we give God praise. That will cause us to jump on the chair and dance before God and praise His name. Hallelujah. Woo! Huh? Is it true? Am I talking the truth today? It is true. If this is what it's about. So I just want to refresh it. This is what it's all about. And I pray the testimonies you're going to hear uh, four or five more here today, that this will enthuse us and encourage us more. Most of you are already doing it. It's just the ones in Tasmania need help. I'm not sure what they're doing down there or Canberra. We'll pick on them today. But here at Harvest Point, you're all going. But I want to say, come on, can we do go more? Not because you have to, because there's a desire birthed in your heart. Say, this is what I was born for. I was born again, not to have a nice life for myself, but to tell the world. Jesus said, go Amen. into all the world yeah. Yeah. and tell what Jesus Christ has done for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wasn't it, well, it was kind of like ironic, wasn't it? He'd say he'd heal a man. Raise him up from the deathbed or make his legs walk again or restore his side back. He'd say, now go tell, tell no one. You think, oh. He wasn't meaning don't tell no one. Who knows? It's like, it's like a, what do you call it? A play, virtually. Because you, if, you if you receive your sight, you're going to go, guess what? Right. Not telling. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Once I was blind, but now I see. Once I was lame, but now I'm walking. Hallelujah. It's a miracle in progress right here. Praise His wonderful name. Amen. You try and hold this man back. He's already calling himself pastor, evangelist, something. Amen. Because he can see his legs walking. Amen. And he's getting, you tell him, say, now be quiet, Greggy. We want to hear a word from you. Don't go tell no one what God's done. They went and told everybody. And the kingdom exploded. That was probably me banging around here. Sorry about that. They'd be excited. Ah. Oh. Is it okay, friends, we get excited? Is it okay if we celebrate what God's Absolutely. doing today? Absolutely. In my short encounter, I pray it touches your heart today. Come on, Russ has been out at the surf. I didn't see you there, Russ. Welcome home from the Surf Life Saving Championships Australia. Is that right? Huh? 50 of the world, 53 countries, and he was out on the beat down there at the Gold Coast, amen. Why? Being a light, taking glory to that place, amen. Seeing who we can influence. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Lord, those chaplains, we bless them today in Jesus' name. And we thank you for fruit. We thank you, Lord, that those that hear the call of God and answer that call to be a chaplain. And Lord, we pray for fruitfulness from their ministry right now in Jesus' name. Come on, Russ, you're not doing all this work of accounting and all this trying to work it out just so you can have another organisation. We're doing it for the glory of God and lives and souls will be changed. Thousands upon thousands of families represent through life-saving. We believe God today for a great breakthrough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let him talk. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start. And praise God, what the Lord put on my heart to share was absolutely flowing in line with what Pastor Mark shared. Because I didn't want to share of any particular testimony, but I wanted to share about how the Lord helps me to step out in faith to be that light to reach the people. And what I do from, thank you, Vicky, I draw, I draw from the well of living water. Oh, I'm shaking, but that's the Lord. In me, my part is to set my love upon Jesus and make sure I'm filled up with his word and his living water, right? Push back the spirit of heaviness like we prayed today, which, boy, did I have to do during the week. Glory to God. And I do not have a spirit of fear. And I had to talk to myself and speak to myself because the way I operated yesterday from the Lord is the, very different from how I operate in the salon. And I actually remember talking to Shelley a few weeks ago and saying, well, I operate differently. <laughs> but God, right? So I took authority. 
you know, was taking authority, particularly yesterday morning because I went out yesterday and got the word of God and I hammered those doubts, those insecurities and those fears with the word of God yesterday May morning. And I st- and and then I got that song. Was it na 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 na? I'm free. So and I played it and I played it and I played it before I got there. And we got there at 7:30. Tracy picked me up. Whew. But it doesn't mean you don't feel the fear. Absolutely, my my heart's pounding right now. And yet, to most people, you'd think I come across pretty confident. I'm confident in who I am in Christ. Absolutely. But you've still got the flesh to deal with. So I do it afraid. But as you step out in faith, that fear goes and you become more confident. So I found that, and I'm like, okay, Lord, show me who. And he'd just point out people to me. And so I'd go up to them. Woo! But I was armed too, praise God. Shelley and Emmanuel made all these wonderful things and I was armed. I had my fingers loaded with them and we were going out and about and you just, first of all, I had something. Would you like one of these? And it just opened up the doors. I had the cards with me. But what I did is I drew from the well of the living water and the joy of my salvation The joy of how the Lord has set me free. The joy of the truth of who God is to me. And just released that love, that light to every single person I come across. It's actually easy. When you're drawing from the well of living water and truth that the Lord has given you. You might have only been just saved, so you're drawing from that. You might have known the Lord for many, many years. So you've got many, many testimonies to draw from. I used to think, because I've always known on my heart, that I am an evangelist, absolutely. And I had to learn, and especially the Ten Commandments and all that. You know, I never got them. Never. I wasn't meant to do that. I draw from the truth who Christ is in and through my life. And that is my testimony, and that is what wins souls. Praise God. I had people wanting cuddles yesterday, so I cuddled them. I just loved the way I felt the Lord wanted me to love. Amen. Oh, it's wonderful to share these things with the church. Yeah, shorter. Okay. <laughs> it's hard. There's so much to, you could talk about. But I just want to say that there's a lot more, um, even than just seeing the people saved. There was more. Like I saw, I had the privilege to, to uh, talk to people and they gave their life to the Lord. But the funny thing was that there's kind of spin offs from that. Um, and I'll just give you an example. There were two. Um, that did the same thing. I went to talk to this lady and I'm talking to her and she said, oh, my daughter keeps bugging me to go to church. And the daughter's sitting there and I said, oh, is that right? She said, yes. So talking to the daughter and she gives a life to the Lord. And I looked at the mother and I said, you need to, to listen to your daughter. And the mother's like, wow. <laughs> and so... The daughter gave her life to the Lord. She was 17. But the mother was listening, listening, listening. So, and that happened a second time. The um, tent or whatever you call it, the stall, that was behind where we were. I went in there to talk to the man. And he, he didn't really want to give his life to the Lord. But he said, I have a son. And he got Bibles from, from you last year. And he hasn't stopped reading. (laughs) Amen. So, but he doesn't really understand how to give his life to the Lord. So I stood with the father and I explained to him how he gives his life to the Lord. And he says, he's taking notes. He says, I'll I'll tell my son that. I'll I'll show my son this, the prayer card. I'll show my son... (laughs) And I'm thinking, yeah, and you'll be saved by the time you you explain this to your son. So this is a sort of thing. And and if I can just say one more, there was a a lady and she, she 
she looked beautiful. She was dressed in colourful clothing and she had like um, a head thing on with all colours of little balls that stood up. And I looked at her and I said, you look beautiful. And she said, thank you. And then she said, I'm dying of cancer. And I said, oh, hello. Are you, do, you know, do you know Jesus? And she said, not really. Um, she said, I sort of believe, but I, I don't really know. Anyway, we talked and we talked. And she ended up giving her life to the Lord and praying right there. But she put her arms around me and she cried and she cried. And, and she said, I feel so much better now. She said, she didn't say, I'm not afraid to die. But that was what she was meaning. And she said, you've taken, just by hearing about Jesus and hearing about this, I'm, I feel much better. And this big heaviness is lifting off me. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So I'll let someone else speak now. <laughs> Amen. So I just have to give all the glory to God for all of this. We are the light out in our community. That's not just us. That's every one of us. We're the body for him. I've started doing teaching the children about Jesus at the school. The parents, multiple parents gave their life to the Lord at the show because their children ran up to me. Yeah. Are you the religious teacher? I said, no, no. Ava, you tell your mum what I teach you, how much Jesus loves me. Yeah. And then I... <laughs> it's, it's about bringing the presence of heaven where there is none. It's the light. There was one child, well, there was one lady that came into the tent. <clears throat> Emmanuel and Shelley gave her a pair of boots, the mum. And later on, she came back. They, she, we tried to engage with her, but she was a little bit standoffish. But she ended up coming back and with just such a thankful heart for those boots. She was so grateful. And I was just sitting down and the Lord said, get up and bless Evie and Billy. And tell her about your hair. <laughs> and, I, and it turns out she was a hairdresser. And she understood what trauma can do to your hair. And I told her the story. And later in the day, and she went away, she was softened. Shelley said to me, wow, something shifted in her in that as I shared with her. Because it's our testimonies. It's your testimonies of what Jesus has done for you, for each of us. Out. I went out in the show and the little one ran up to me and was hugging me and, and asked me, could I sit down with them? So I sat with her and the little kid climbed up on my lap, little Evie. And the mum said, that's really strange. She doesn't normally do that. And I just talked a bit, little bit more. The three of them gave their heart to the Lord. <laughs> but it's not just a blessing for them. They blessed me. I, have had, I had a horrific trauma when I was 14 years old where I don't go to fireworks. I don't, <clears throat> they've been, a, they have, that's been something else that I knew was going to be healed. And I said to Tracy Thursday morning, you know, that firework, the sound, the, the, I love fireworks. The devil can, th Thursday night I had a really bad night with pain, pain in my hips. It robbed me from coming to worship rehearsal. I woke up Friday morning, I said, that's it, you're done. Twelve salvations are coming out of this. And if you do it again, another twelve the next day. <laughs> and we had, an, oh Lord, thank you Jesus. Because of the light that we are, we just, and it's not just us saying, have you, re it's the seeds, it's the watering, and God, he brings the increase. Amen. That little girl had just said amen with her mum and her sister and straight out of her mouth came, Janet, will you sit with us and watch the fireworks? <laughs> I had not planned to stay for the fireworks. <laughs> but I don't run anymore. Yeah. So I did. We went and watched the fireworks with these girls. I've got, <laughs> I've got video of me watching the fireworks, praise God. 
And after the fireworks, her older friends, an older couple in front of them turned around and the children shared how much Jesus loved them. And then they gave their life to the Lord. Um, so uh, my testimony is, as much as I would love to say that um, our little team had salvations, we, we, we didn't have any. However, the reason I wanted to take the mic anyway was because... One, we were all a part of the team. We were all a piece of the puzzle. Um, but we had some very interesting experiences. So um, Jordy, I, uh, Tyler, and David, that was our little team. Um, and we were going to go out. So we were going out there and, and meeting and talking with people. And I grabbed the, uh, the lollipop jar, only for Tyler to be like, heck no, you are not telling that. Because, I mean, if I was standing over a little kid going, you want the least kid? It wouldn't work very well. <laughs> so we decided not to, not to go with that. Um, but what we ended up doing instead was the shoes that we were going to give out, um, we ended up taking a bunch of those. So we'd take four or five of them at a time. I'd load Tyler and uh, David up like pack horses, and we'd go out into the, into the show. Um, and we would just walk up to people and go, hi, uh, my name's Jacob, Jordan, Tyler, and David, and we've been donated $9,000 worth of shoes, and all we wanted to do today is just to bless you guys and give you these shoes. And you should see the reactions in the moment. They completely just um, are so open to us, and some of them started crying because they had never been blessed like this before. And one in particular really stood out to me. Um, we walked up to this, this family, I because I was targeting kid, uh, families with small kids because the boots were only size ones and twos. So, so we went, um, so we had, had a goal in mind. But we saw this young family with a pram. Sorry, targeting kids does sound really bad. Don't take that the wrong way. Uh, so we saw a, a family with a, uh, with a um, young pram in there, and I went, sweet, that's, that seems like a good one. So we went over to them, and they immediately saw these T-shirts, the ones that we were wearing there, the I Believe. And as much as we wanted a good response, they immediately went, no, we don't want anything to do with you. Sorry, no, go, go away, please. And I went, well, if you just let, 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 me, let me, all we want to do is bless you with these shoes. And instantly, like the walls of Jericho falling down, her guard dropped instantly. And then she was open to what we were saying. She was able to take some of our cards. She was said that she would invite people to youth and the young adults just off that one interaction. Because we weren't soliciting anything, we weren't trying to sell her anything, we were just there to bless her. So now, every time she sees one of these shirts, she doesn't think, oh no, she thinks, wow, these were the guys that blessed us. Yeah. That symbol now is a good symbol. So yeah, that, that was a really powerful time for us. Um, I just really want to thank that we have such a diverse team. You know, um, we've got from our young ones like David, and Caleb and stuff, and they they didn't really know what to be doing, and they just kept coming back to me like, this is addictive, this is so addictive, <laughs> because um, it was glory. Our um, Pastor Greggy was there for quite some time, which was amazing. Would you like to say something, Greg? <laughs> so it's going to be quick and short. <laughs> I've been practicing for months, under a minute. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mark? So this is going to be short, like me, but we should especially give big thanks to Shelley and Emmanuel. It's their leadership that makes this group possible. Uh, see people follow leaders, like what you do. Like, it takes a little bit to get me out of my comfort zone, but I've done a few sh shows now. But um, I had no idea. I said to them when I got there, I said, I'm a new kid on the block. I'm just here to listen and learn. And straight away, Shelley's like, here's some cards. This is all I have to do. You know, just really just uh, let uh, your light and love shine for the people to see and smile and have conversations. It's pretty simple. But... Um, Interesting how many people were willing to take a card, even some of my family from Catholic Church, they took it. I don't expect them to convert any time soon, but that's okay. Well, I tell them all I come here every Sunday and um, I love coming here so much. So this is my family now, you guys. Thank you, Shelley. Again, thank you, everybody. How good is that, eh? Did you enjoy that today? 
Can we stand this morning and just honour God and appreciate these beautiful people? And as I say that, they've said also, we appreciate you today, every one of you here this morning. Because, you, you know, let me just give another example. There's multiple things happened over the show. I was just nearby. We we're watching a bit of stuff last night and Reg was there and Reg is talking to a bloke. And he said, hey, Pastor Mark, come over here. Come over here. Come talk to this fellow here. And this, we talked to a friend of a friend, somebody within the church here, a young guy, youngish guy, 19 or something years of old. And Reg is there ministering. Now, he didn't go to the tent to minister, but he's out there watching the do last night and he's engaging people and he's called me over. And this fellow was that close, wasn't he? He never crossed the line. So close, so hungry. He would be here this morning, other than he's helping with the photography for photos to be all delivered back to the rightful owners this morning at the showgrounds. So he's got a little job to do. But Reggie, and there's multiple of you. God's moving powerfully, amen? It's just, just leaning in, open hearts everywhere. So our thing is today, we want to encourage everybody here. This is not for this team only, and Janet already said that. This is for everybody in the house. You are doing it. Be encouraged today. Go hard. You know what? I just think if you've had a rough trot, and I love this kind of, I'm a bit of a feisty person, and you nearly have to be to do the kingdom. Can I say that? The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So passive Christianity, you living a private faith, does not work. And the enemy is coming after you. Because he wants to keep you contained. You are dangerous. Every one of you here in this room are dangerous to the devil's dark power. But in Jesus Christ, we win, amen, to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Let me, hold on, hang on, yeah, yeah. Can we, can, can we just applaud everybody in the house today, first of all? Thank you for what you do. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for your aggressiveness in the kingdom of God. We appreciate every one of you today. And I don't know if you can hear my heart today. Some of us are quite a people, quite a personalities. There's multiple ways to do this thing. So we're not saying, and you've heard the examples, there's, there's not one way to do it. But glory to God, amen. Can you get some grunt? If the devil's poked you ever, if he's ever done something to you and you go, oh, you know, and you're kind of taking a few steps back, can I ask you today, pop the clutch. You know what I mean? Pop it back a gear, drop it back a gear and send it. For the kingdom of God. This lifestyle, let me say it, it's crazy talk. It does become addictive. It gives you a rush. It gives you a high on the most high. Is that right? It does. You're like, it's like Reg was buzzing. This bloke was that close. And it was like, he, after like, it's like, did you see that? Did you? He's coming in, but you should try it. It's like we said, as sister said, depression goes. Whoop. Navel gazing goes. Whoop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's powerful. Come on. We're activating this morning. We're activating an army of the living God. Amen. So if the devil has ever wronged you, and to most of us he has, why don't you get some gumption in your umption and say, no, oh, man, we're going to make him have a bad day today and tomorrow and next week, come on, that's what it does. I'm going to go win somebody. I'm going to sow seed. I'm going to let my light shine and do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Come on, this is harvest, harvest point church of the living God. Hallelujah. Where the harvest is matters to us. Amen. And we've been on this generation for decades here at this church. I mean, is that right, Pastor Errol? Decades that we are the Harvest Point Church in this region for a reason. Come on. We are a force for record. Come on. This is the biggest church in the scenic rim with the largest attendees. Amen. It's the reason because we're about the harvest. You are. And we're about the Holy Ghost. 
and the Word of God and the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and your life matters and you want to live it full, amen, to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ray was in the animal nursery. Ray was there having a field day with people, wasn't he? Ray's with the kids' church this morning driving the bus, if anyone's wondering, okay? People are busy here. People are doing stuff, amen? Come on, get a part of it. There's a, another. While you're standing, we're going to pray for you. I just didn't dismiss you because we're going to do something here. While you're standing, can we just pray to God over the harvest? Pray for the seed. Pray for the lives. Thank you, Lord, today for Shelly and Emmanuel. Thank you for the anointing upon their life. Thank you for the leadership upon their life, Lord, to gather these people in power. And thank you for these people, Lord, who for this weekend particularly just gave themselves up time Lord, to go to the harvest. Lord, we thank you. We've been praying, Lord, send laborers in the harvest field. We're prophesying here today that the harvest is ready and the laborers are many. The harvest is ready and the laborers are many. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We're in the new covenant because Christ has come. His blood was shed, amen. And we have the victory today. And this, we're gonna be a church that lives in the victory of the glory of God. Father, bless that seed yesterday. Bless the lives that said yes to Jesus. Father, we water it with our prayers this morning. Every individual, every child, young and old, Father, we thank God today for their salvation. And we prophesy it is an eternal salvation today. Look, this is not bound on what they do and what they have done or what they might do. It's bound on the righteousness of God, gifted to mankind. Father, help them to walk in righteousness. Help them to live that way. We pray that today in Jesus' name. That is the work of sanctification. You are sanctified and are being sanctified. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. Father, we thank you today for your work in these hearts and lives that were touched this weekend. In Jesus' name, bless them. Protect them. You said you would. Save them. Hallelujah. Lord, cause them to walk in a greater level of victory in their new creation reality. We bless those fruits today in Jesus' name. Thank you for these, Lord God. Any needs that we have on the platform today from each one here, Lord God, personal needs, health and otherwise, we pray, Lord, resourcefully, the hand of God, relationally, the hand of God to be upon their families, upon their livelihoods, upon their businesses, upon their coming and going life. We bless them today in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for the great anointing that they carry. Thank you for the experiences they've had. Lord, let it continue to bring testimony to the glory and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honour you today and give you the praise and the glory in this wonderful name, the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God says, Emeli and Shaniel, ma 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 bruti, Mali and Mali. Yeah, Lord, you know, Shelley and Emmanuel. Bra, see, kid, I mean, God with us, and God is with you. Ha ha, and God will continue to be with you. And whilst you believe God for personal needs, God says, as you go on and go forth, God says, I'm doing a mighty work. And I will continue to do that work within your family and the needs that you have, says God. Because God says, I'm working as you've gone with great joy. I'm working on your behalf, says God. And God says, abundant blessing is coming your way as you faithfully have given yourself of time, monetary wise, you've given yourself to this cause, the cause of the kingdom of God. Father, we bless this couple and their family today and thank God for richness of God's glory to descend upon them. I rebuke the devourer today in Jesus' name. We rebuke the assignment of the enemy on their lives or towards them. We put a protection around them of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, they are covered by the glory and the blood of the Lord Jesus. We apply blood, Lord, not literal blood, but with the hyssop of our tongue. We by faith apply our, with our tongue, we apply faith to the cleansing power, the protection and the delivering power of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ over their lives today. Protection, divine protection, we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. And the flood of God's harvest is coming in. And God says, don't stop. Don't allow disappointment of any form to shape your future. God says, allow the truth of my word to continue to shame your, shape your future from this day forward. And in actual fact, any form of shame or regret has been broken off your life. 
It's washed and cleansed away by the blood. That's a has-been, hallelujah. That was a has-been. You're no longer that couple in Jesus' name. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, keep moving forward in the strength and the glory of the living God. In Jesus' wonderful name. You know what we felt impressed to do today? If you want to give financially to this couple, I encourage you to do so. So, well, Mark, what's all this about? No, they've laid their life on the line. Pastor Grace and I know personally they've bought and made a lot of the resource that was given away at the show. Whilst we paid for the side and did what we could, amen, there's other things that they didn't ask of us. So they didn't ask me to do this either. I'm being led by the Holy Ghost. Say, if you want to contribute to this family, Shelly and Emmanuel, for what they do, they go to the markets monthly and fortnightly, Boona, but is it? And these other major events that God lets me into. So I want you to just give them a gift and just sew in their hands as the Holy Ghost leads you to do. Amen? Yeah. Praise you. And if He doesn't lead you, just say, that's the devil talking, trying to stop me. <laughs> just do it anyway. Yeah. And just pray for them. Yeah. Pray, pray for these people. Prayer covering. Prayer covering. Because you know what? You, when you step out, the enemy goes, oh, yeah. yeah. woo. No, no, we say no. We pray them with the blood of Jesus. Now, prayer covering, amen. amen. They're acknowledging today the fruitfulness of because of the prayer of the body of Christ. We thank you for that today. Thank we bless you. you. We bless you guys in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have a great rest of the day and a great afternoon. And have some rest, you too. Yeah. Go riding. Yeah. That's the way you rest. Yeah. Rum, rum. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshing, amen. God bless you. Give them a round of applause this morning as they go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Could, yes. Hallelujah. Just another quick testimony. Is this mic working, guys? I'll crank this one up. Thank you. Um, let me just quickly say this for Susan's benefit, just to introduce. Susan just asked, and it's a, a, a very good thing. Last Sunday, and a number of you guys from here went with her. She was at Barney View. We did speak about it, the church member, last Sunday morning. So Susan was at Barney View which is down on the, on the border ranges there. And um, she ran a service at the, well, it was the ex-Uniting Church building. Okay, so it has been sold. A private person bought the building. So it was like under an application we had to go to. And Susan felt in the heart to, uh, for, the, for the community that was there coming to worship, that we take the gospel to them again. So she took it there last Sunday. And please tell them what, the, you got a couple of weeks or a couple of things? Just a few minutes. Yes, just very briefly, um, just to follow on from, from the salvation things that you've heard this morning. Um, I almost walked away from this church. Um, the people were very divided, and Wendy knows because Wendy's familiar, and it was Wendy that asked me to go in the first place. Um, the people were very divided, very argumentative. Um, there was a definite religious spirit at work within this church. When the Uniting Church sold it, the lady that bought it, she's a new age lady. And uh, the church was very, very upset and nobody wanted to go back. And then I heard that this lady was going to conduct ghost tours from the church um, because there's a little graveyard beside it. And um, she was right into all the new age teachings and all this sort of stuff. The story just got worse and worse. And uh, I said, oh, she wanted gay marriages as well. So she rang me and she said, would you come and uh, more or less pastor the church? And I'm thinking, well, I don't really want anything to do with this. So I, I went before the Lord. And I said, Lord, what do we do? What do you want, Lord? And he said, and this is what made me ask to speak, because you said this, Mark. He said... You are the light. Get up and take the light into the darkness. So, hallelujah. So I said, yes, Lord. And on the Sunday, six new ages all rocked up to the service. <laughs> and they all heard about Jesus, that he's the truth, he's the life, and he's the way. <laughs> Amen. So we're looking forward to uh, more of the same. 
Uh, we'll see what God does in this place. Um, but at the moment, it's just two services on the first Sunday and the last Sunday of each month. So I'll see you in between and hopefully there'll be a great praise report. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, just while you're here, I just was reminded just then, did you know that the founder of this movement, which was called Christian Outreach Centre, by Pastor Clark Taylor, who remembers him? Yeah. yeah? That was his church. When he was 10, that's where he went to church. This building, Barney View, that was the church that he went to church in, the founder of this movement that's now global. That was his church. Now the dear sister's gone back to that church, owned by a... Real estate agent. No, she real estate agent. A real estate agent. And, and we got invited, privately owned, invited back in to bring the kingdom of God yeah. to that platform, eh? Can you see the journey? Well, God's did that amazing. That's beautiful, isn't it? Thank you, Susan. Thank you. God bless you for that. Well, there's more testimonies to come from Barney View. There could be another Clark Taylor down there. Did you hear me? He was a mighty man of God. Norman Judy are here today. In the latter years of their life, amen. Born again. Touched by the Holy Ghost, amen, because of Clark Taylor and his ministry at West End. Brought a home meeting to their house, hence this church here today. Stand up, Norman Judy, if you don't mind again. I want to honour you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just while you remain standing, you know what? There's people today being born again because of this home meeting that started in their house. There's a new family here today, Norman Judy, because of the move of God that started in your lounge room. From the founder who started in Barney View, where Susan was last Sunday ministering the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Woo! It's the kingdom of God at work. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, it doesn't give you goosebumps. Makes you want to dance, sing and shout and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I won't sing and dance either. Hmm. Not when you're looking. <laughs> so you know what? No, 15 overtime already. That's the, that's the power. Joel? Next week, you can have the power in the back pocket. Trick. Hey, um, don't forget tonight, revival prayer meeting. I'll come to that. Shush. Don't forget, Kingdom Living Divine Health. Wednesday, is that right? And it's nearly holiday time. Hallelujah. I'm just doing this on the fly today. Hey? Don't forget. Hello. <laughs> Read the email. Thank you. What email, Amanda? Welcome home. No, I know exactly what's going on. Next Sunday, the 15th of September, at 4 p.m. here, we're having a special meeting. I want you to all to come along. We've invited churches in the Cynic Rim to come. We're having a candidate forum for the state election here. Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m., where it'll be a, just a forum where we're going to be asking the candidates whom you will be electing in the electorate of right runs into life. Sorry, Samuel. It's me. I don't want to keep playing with it. I'm going to just use the other one. Okay. Turn me off. Sorry. Sorry about that. I've got to get dressed better. And stop all that movement happening, okay? Apologize for that. So it's very powerful that we... Um, 
very powerful. I was just looking at the bloke walking in the back paddock. It's okay. Um, that you all come along next Sunday. What's say next Sunday? 4 p.m.? 4 p.m. So we're going to have the, I think we've got three candidates have confirmed that they're coming here. Uh, the LMP, One Nation and Family First. We're not sure about the red and the green colour. You know who they are? Yeah. Huh? They have been invited. Okay. All colours. Everyone say all colours have been invited to come. Yeah. So the questions will be will be taken by a what do you call the person on the side? A moderator. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. M. And uh, I want to invite you to come and hear because who wants to hear what they've got to say about the issues that concern you? So you know how to vote. Okay. So please come along next Sunday afternoon. We'll announce it in the morning. All the other churches have been notified. All the other denominations have been told. If you see friends and people around, you can invite them to come. There'll be no singing, no worship. We're just going to welcome people, have a short chat and hop straight into the questions. And you'll hear from them and uh, they'll answer your questions. And I'm sure you can grab them after as they're leaving and hound them if you want to. Is that cool? Don't be respectful. Is that cool? Do you have a question? I think we're going to live stream it, guys, if some of the team can be aware of that. Sunday afternoon, we'll live stream that. Thank you, Russ. Yes, I did hear that conversation. And so just to understand what the background is, these, these meetings, these forums will be happening all around Queensland, hopefully, in the different electorates. So the church is getting together and they're asking their candidates of what the big questions, what are they going to do and how they're going to represent the people in government, okay? So that's the questions they'll be asking. So it's not just happening here, it's happening in other locations around Queensland for the up-and-coming state election. So it's not a harvest point thing. It's not a this, that thing. It's not a political thing. It's actually, a, it is political, but we're asking the questions because you, the people, are the people voting and you get to have your say by asking what you're going to know, what you're going to vote for. And by, and by coming and turn up. The numbers are important to come out, okay? Because the more the numbers, they're going to go, whoa, people want to know what's going on. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. So I'm inviting a whole church to come. There'll be others that will come. We'll pack the place out and they'll be like, Oh, okay. We're on here. Is that good? good. Praise God. Where's Jake? We've got the men's meeting. Is, um, doesn't start until Saturday the... Monday the 28th. Thank you, Craig. Monday the 28th and the 1st October. The first Monday in October for the blokes is when the real men start again. Um, and just for next term, just a quick announcement is that uh, fam, firm foundations will be happening next term is with Joel and Tracy as well. Next Sunday, we're going to present certificates in the morning. We're going to hear about Africa as well, what's the, the upcoming, what's, the, what's happening there. And, uh, but also next term, in conjunction with firm foundations in a separate room here, we're going to, I'm going to probably have not just one, but maybe a couple of uh, presenters. We're going to train on evangelism here on Wednesday night, right? Separate from Firm Foundations, but running on the same time in this building. So if you want to be a part of that, please come along. Those that are very good at it and those that have never done it before, this is your chance to up your skills and that. And so we'll talk about a whole lot of things, not just one thing. We're going to give you some more tools in evangelism. That's next term coming up for probably a number of weeks on a Wednesday night. Is that cool? Yeah. It's all to come. Hallelujah. And guess what? Guess what comes then? Christmas. If you say it quickly, we're there, eh? Uh, praise the Lord. How about we stand to our feet this morning? It's been a great day, hasn't it? Thank you for all those that have shared today. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If the worship team comes, we'll just, we'll just sing a song to close. Let me just pray for you today and bless you. If anybody would like prayer for anything, I know we've gone a bit over time this morning, but thank you for gracing the team to speak and share. I'm sure you found that very interesting. And uh, we honour them and honour the work that they've done this last weekend. Father, we thank you today for those in the house. Thank you for all those that have made it out online and here today. We bless them in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit to be working in our lives in a powerful way. Thank you, Lord, for the good work that your people are doing. 
within the scenic rim and Logan districts. We bless each individual, every family. Let the protection of the living God be around their lives. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, for those that need a miracle, we thank you, Lord, that you are a miracle worker. And we trust you today to turn up in their lives. Those that have recently received Jesus Christ and are here today, we bless them also and thank God for the salvation that's come to them and their household. Thank you for the plan of salvation being unfolded in this region. We give you praise. We give you honour. If you're here today, friend, and you've never received Jesus Christ, we always give opportunity, mostly on most Sundays, if you have not responded to Jesus and never invited Him into your heart. Can I say this? They're kind of statements that are big, but Jesus will change everything. He will make you brand new from the inside out. He will put His Spirit in your life and empower you to live a life of victory, a victorious life through the truths and the power and the authority of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross. It will work in your life in an amazing way. And they're not promises that we make personally to you, but they're promises that Jesus Christ made to us. And He makes that promise to you through us that He will work His Word in your life in a powerful way. We can guarantee that His Word works in this house. So if you're today, friend, you've ever received Jesus Christ, you'd like to just simply, you can either raise your hand or walk to the front right now. We'll pray for you, lead you in a short prayer. And Jesus Christ will become your Lord and Saviour. Because if you'll believe in your heart and speak with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you shall be saved. For with your heart one believes unto righteousness and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father, we thank you for the power, the simplicity, but yet the magnitude of the greatness of salvation that unfolds when people make this step. Father, thank you for people choosing salvation today in Jesus' name. If you're there, friend, just quickly raise your hand if there's others who want to receive Christ or you want to just walk to the front. If you need healing this morning, quickly come and we'll pray with you this morning and bless you. Otherwise, have some great lunch. Have a great feed today. Enjoy the fellowship. Please stay. If you're new today, help someone. Someone takes you to the social area. Have a cup of tea and coffee and have a meal together. God bless you. Thank you, worship team. You should lead us in one last song as we celebrate Jesus this morning. God bless you, church. Have a great and awesome week. And if you want prayer, quickly, please come. If you brought a friend and you want to receive Jesus Christ, you come quickly also. And God will meet you at your point of need. Hallelujah.